Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Guilty Gear Strive, but just the demo deck. Guilty Gear is a popular board game franchise in the side-scrolling combat genre, and the board game is a little different, but still features the side-scrolling combat type. You'll be selecting one of two fighters from this demo deck. However, there are plenty more to choose from in the main game. I have Kai here, and I have Soul Bad Guy. You'll be taking your deck, shuffling it up, drawing a number of cards, and then utilizing your characters on the main game board to move around, whether it be to advance or close your position, attack with combat cards, and reduce your opponent's 30 HP to zero. The first player to do so is the winner in the game. Let's talk about this game that features and functions a lot like Exceed right now. Setting up the game Guilty Gear Strive, the board game, is actually quite simple. What I have here is the main game mat, which you will unfold and place within the middle of the tabletop for you and your opponent. Each player is going to be choosing one of these decks of cards here, shuffling it up, and then taking their character card, or character miniature, or figure, or standee, whatever the main game might have, and placing it down on their location on the board. Red for red, and blue for blue. Each player is also going to be getting a health token, which has got a heaven or hell, and placing it on the number 30 on their main life gauge. Your deck is going to be placed on the deck location, and the first player will draw five cards, while the second player will draw six. The rest of the cards being action references, the different types of cards you'll have in your deck for normals, and of course, your ultras are going to be referenced next to you, and you can leave them within reach so that you can see them at all times. After you've done that, and you have your five cards in hand, the first player is going to begin. A turn in Guilty Gear Strive is actually quite simple, and how it works is you can follow this action reference. You will take one action, and then at the end of your turn, after you're done with your one action, you are going to be able to draw a card. However, if you for any reason choose to strike at any point on your turn, you do not draw a card. Cards are like resources that you can utilize, allowing you to A, move your character, and B, strike, the most important thing in the game. As you play cards, they might be contain boosts that you can play on the field, or you can also get them to turn into gauge points. Gauge points are usually going to be involving whether or not you're able to use those to not only flip your character and make them stronger, but increase the value of cards in your hand, such as ultimates. On your turn, there are many actions to take, and we'll talk about them in order. The first one is prepare. Preparing will allow you to draw a card from your deck, and then that will end your turn. However, ending your turn will let you draw as long as you didn't strike, so every time you prepare, you're also going to draw another card. The next action in the game is to walk, which will allow you to advance or retreat from your opponent. You can walk by spending force, and force comes from your hand or it comes from your gauge. Gauge points and uh, hand points are both force, and you can use them interchangeably. For instance, if I'm playing Soul Bad Guy and I am facing against Kai, who's three spaces away from me, I can discard two cards from my hand and one card from my gauge, allowing me to move three spaces closer, advancing on Kai's location. That would be an action on my turn, thusly I'd be done, and I did not strike, so I would draw a card. Another action you can take is boosting. Boosting will allow you to give yourself bonus passive benefits when the strike has been acted upon. Some of them are going to be continuous effects that stay on the field. And in order to play boosts, you'll just simply take them from your hand and place them down onto the grid next to your boost section. Cards with the plus sign will stay, and you'll pass your turn, thusly drawing a card. Sometimes they'll give you speed and guard, or even potentially power, or allow you to draw cards. And other times, you can use cancel effects with boosts. You can spend a card to create a boost effect, which is always on the bottom of your card, discard a card, utilizing your ability to spend force from your gauge or from your hand, to then trigger the effect of the boost, and play another action which usually involves playing a card face down as a strike. There are many other ways in which you can use boosts, but regardless, if it's not a cancel ability, you can't take an extra action, in which case you would just draw. And for the most part, these are cards that stay on the field until the end of a strike has happened, and you'll use all of them that exist there in the addition to the strike and give you some, some type of strong bonus. Changing cards is also quite useful as well. Considering you only have a total hand maximum size of seven, you can discard up to seven cards from your hand, or I guess even more from your boost area, to draw that many cards, and always discard back down to seven. 
That's considered an action, and it's not a strike, so remember to draw an extra card at the end of your turn. Once a game, you'll get a manual reshuffle, which means if your entire deck goes into your discard pile and you no longer have anything left to draw, you can take your discard pile and you can go ahead and shuffle this back to create a new deck. You can also do this earlier in the game if you'd like. Maybe you're missing certain cards that you want, thus letting you continue playing the game. Remember to use it wisely, though, because it can only be happening one time. Your characters also have very special abilities and they're written on their main card. These cards here represent your specific unique powers when playing cards or canceling boosts or whatever it is that they specifically do. They have a unique profession that only works with them. For instance, if I wanted to play as Soul Bad Guy and I wanted to flip his card as an action, I have to spend gauge points. These are still forced, but they have to come from my gauge. I can discard three. That is what is required to switch Soul Bad Guy and I can flip him over to his red side. When I've done that, now my character is at its most possible power level that he can possibly be. Okay, so there's a bunch of actions. However, the main action, the most important one, is to strike. Striking is simple. On your turn, when you have priority, you can designate that you would like to attack. You can take one of the cards in your hand and place it face down on the table. Your opponent will do the same. You'll both reveal and you'll check your stats. The main basic idea. On your card, you're going to have a number of different stats. The range at which you need to be at in order to hit your opponent can't be less, it can't be more. The amount of power you have, which is the amount of damage you will be dealing. The amount of speed you have, whether you're going to be attacking first or your opponent. There's also going to be some defense. Defense is the reduction from the power that you will be taking. Five attack or five power and three defense equals two damage. And finally, guard. Guard is a unique stat that functions kind of like defense. If the amount of power you take is ever over the number of guard on your card, you will become stunned and your strike will not count. Next, you're gonna have a special effect. Usually these cards will say something like on hit or continuous or specific traits like ignoring armor and ignoring guard. When you cast this card, you'll be checking the speed to see who goes first, checking the power to see how much damage you do, does your opponent have defense, and did you break their guard? If none of that is true, it'll pass to your opponent to attack as well. But always make sure that you're within range, because if you're not, your attack misses completely. Any special benefits, check here. And remember, the boost here is not necessary unless it is on your boost area. That is a basic strike, and that is how it works. When you lose life, you will reduce it from your total, which is 30, going down to whatever number it might be. Hitting zero is how you lose the game. But there are two more types of attacks. The next type of attack is called an EX attack. When you flip over cards, you can actually play two cards at the same time, but it must be an EX effect. And in order to do that, you have to have two cards of the same name. So if I'm playing Stun Edge, I can go ahead and set one down. And if I have an extra in my hand, I can set a second one down. When revealing as a strike, all that happens is one of them will go to the discard pile. And now you have an EX attack, which gives you an extra speed, armor, guard, and power in calculations for your opponent's attack. Uh, the last and final attack in the game is going to be these super moves. Super moves basically can be played face down as one, or you can EX them if you happen to have two of the same name. And what they are going to do is they're going to require you to spend force from your hand or from your gauge. Ride the lightning is going to be four costs, so I would have to discard uh, four cards, either from my hand or the gauge area, to use the effect. This card is very, very powerful though, and worth every penny when it comes to spending your much needed force. Don't forget though, with an EX effect, it's even better, so make sure to ride the lightning twice if you can. Whenever you strike, you don't get to draw. However, your strike card, and maybe any cards in your boost area, checking effects, are always going to move to the gauge as long as they hit. If something doesn't hit, or doesn't say to go to the gauge area, it will be discarded, and then your turn is over. So you'll take one of the actions that I've mentioned here, then you're going to draw a card if you don't strike, if you strike, you're going to check to see what happens along with what happens with your opponent's strike card, and then your card is going to go to the gauge or the discard pile and you will pass. And you'll keep going back and forth. So I might, as an instance, choose to draw a card on my turn and draw because I didn't strike. My opponent may then choose to play a boost and draw a card. And then I might like my hand and choose to play a card face down as a strike. My opponent will respond by playing their strike, will reveal and resolve and move on, and it keeps going like that until somebody's HP is reduced to zero, and that's the end of the game. 
Guilty Gear Strive is a side-scrolling two-player combat board game that involves you and your opponent selecting a unique character, utilizing the cards in their deck and their special cards, as well as their characters with their abilities, and attempting to battle that out in an all-out game of warfare until somebody hits zero. It's an intense combat game where the swings are wild. You might at one point think that you have no chance of winning, and then all of a sudden your character makes a huge comeback. While damage is important, and so is defense and guard, the most important thing in my opinion is speed. Speed will let you go first, and going first can make all the difference. If for instance I play a card, and I am able to get within range of the opponent, and I am going first, and let's say I do 10 damage to him, or some crazy number like that, and I also push him back two spaces, and his specific strike card is a one range attack, he's now not within range of me, and thusly he can't use the card. And so trying to kind of presume what your opponent is trying to do on their turn is very, very important. But not only that, each character functions differently. Soul Bad Guy, for instance, is kind of more of a close range fighter with some seriously damaging attacks and ability to draw cards, while as Kai is more of a long range fighter with kind of a slow game and a build up until the point where you can't deal with them at all and it's too late. Each character in this game, I'm going to imagine, is going to have their own unique style of play, their own unique cards, and their own unique abilities. For instance, while playing as Soul Bad Guy, whenever I strike, if I cancel a boost, meaning I played an, paid an extra card to use the boost effect to take an extra action, my card is going to get plus one power. And that is a huge difference when you're playing it throughout the game, including using the boosts, which give you tons of power as well. Whereas the character Kai says that the first time each time you cancel, you may advance or retreat one, allowing you to get within or out of range of your opponent's attacks. And not only that, but being able to flip the cards over and give them their own unique ultimate ability, which is basically the same thing that they have, but with even more power. For instance, um, Kai, Kai will actually let you draw in addition to moving, and Soul is just going to give you plus two more power, becoming a serious powerhouse. When I was playing this game originally with Soul, I started off very strong, to the point where my opponent thought that they didn't even have a chance of winning. And then they came back, started realizing the different style and skill that the character that they have has, and how they can choose to move in certain types of ranges to make the right attacks. Making the right attack, judging what your opponent is going to do, and knowing what their deck is like is going to make all the difference in the game. There are a lot of different actions in the game, but the game is very simple. Yes, you can draw a card, and you can boost, and walk, and change cards, and manual reshuffle, etc., etc., but it's really all about this. Card advantage and striking. Choosing when the best time to combo off and play your best strike card, making sure you're within range and doing as much damage as possible, and making sure your opponent does as little damage as possible. Stunning your opponent by pushing them over that guard is so important, making them not be able to attack, period, and gaining the advantage is also very important as well. When you gain the advantage, basically it means that if I hit and it says I gain the advantage, I'll take an extra turn. Extra turns equal card advantage, card advantage, card advantage equals good, and because of that, there can be some serious combos and some serious things you can do in the game when it comes to your opponent's HP total. There's only three main spaces on the game board, your deck and discard, which is kind of separated to one, your boost, which is the effects on the bottom of your cards, and your gauge, which is basically more currency you can spend after you have utilized the cards, which is awesome. There are certain rules about how you can utilize boosts and how you can utilize extra force when it comes to your red cards here, but the main idea is just the different types of fighters and their styles and how close the game can come. Just when you thought you've won, both you and your opponent are at three life and it comes down to the last speed of one last card, and that's what makes Guilty Gear Strive so fun. If you like 2D side-scrolling games like Street Fighter and uh, Primal Rage, I believe is what it's called. Now you're going to quote me here wrong, I suppose. But uh, those type of games, uh, Mortal Kombat, you're going to really enjoy this type of a board game. It is a two-player game, so don't expect this to be a massive multiplayer game. It's specifically you versus your opponent, each choosing a character and going head-to-head -head on a battlefield, and I really like that. This is a demo deck, however, and I don't know what the full board game is going to be like. I can just tell you what the main base game of these two decks is like, and so far, it's excellent. I enjoyed this game, tons of combinations, each deck feels different, but yet there are uniquenesses and there are similarities between both of them. The card artwork is beautiful, it's done well, it feels like it's important when you play cards, and I just love the intro videos. They're just like this cringy good feel of like over excessive language. That's badass. Prepare for domination. <laughs>
<laughs> just, uh, it, it, it's solid good fun. And when you're playing the game, uh, I couldn't help but maybe throw a few of my own. Uh, I'm going to play Focus, and it's going to be an EX attack. <laughs> this game is good. I really enjoy this type of a game. I've played a few other ones very similar to this game, and this game is similar to this other Level 99 game. So if you've played games like Exceed, then this one is going to feel a little similar to those, but there are some uniquenesses as well. If you're interested in checking out Guilty Gear Strive, there's a link down below in the description. For me, this is an excellent game. I love this style of combat. I love two-player games that go head-to-head -head and feel so close. And if you like that as well, then you'll like this one. For those of you who are not looking for aggressive games or two-player games, Games or card games, it's probably not for you. But otherwise, get this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Guilty Gear Strive, the board game by Level 99 Games. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there is a link down below in the description. And if you'd like, if you think we've earned your subscription, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button right next to it to see more of our videos. We'll show you more games each and every day, Monday through Friday, and a live stream on Sunday for uh, whatnot. Uh, is on Wednesday. We got a lot of damn content. 6.30 p.m. PST for Sunday and on Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for watching. Giveaways are at unfilteredgamer.com. Don't forget to go ahead and click on those last ending days. All right, guys, and as always, I look forward to defeating you in Guilty Gear Strive, because I will next time.